Morning. Okay, so let us start off. Om Sada Shiva Samaram Bhagavatam Shankara Acharya Mandyamah Asmada Acharya Pariyamah Vande Guru Parampara Om Sahana Vavadu Sahana Vanandu Sahaviryam Karvavahai मंत्र नंबर थ्री टू मंत्र नंबर ट्वेल्व प्लीज वन टू थ्री वन टू ट्वेल्व नैतागम श्रृंकाम वित्तमयीम वाप्तः नैतागम श्रृंकाम वित्तमयीम वाप्तः यस्याम मज्जन्ति बहवो मनुष्याः यस्याम मज्जन्ति बहवो मनुष्याः बहवो मनुष्याः दूरमेते विपरीते विशुचि दूरमेते विपरीते विपरीते विशुचि अविद्यायाचिकेत नहवो लोलुपंत मंत्रे पंडित सांपराय प्रतिभाति बालम पुनर्वशमापत्य बहवो आश्चर्यो वक्ता कुशलो आश्चर्यो ज्ञाता कुशलाेणावरेण प्रोक्त सुविज्ञेयो बहुधा चिंत्यमान
ಅನನ್ಯ ಪ್ರೋಕ್ತಿ ಗತಿರತ್ರ ನಾಸ್ತಿ ಅಣೀಯಾನ್ಯತರ್ಕ್ಯರ್ಮಣು ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ನೈಷಾ ತರ್ಕೇಣ ಮತಿರಾಪನೇಯ ಯಾಂತ್ಯಧೃತಿ ತ್ವಾದೃನ್ನೋ ಭೂಯಾನ್ನ ಚಿಕೇತ ಪ್ರಷ್ಟ ತ್ವಾದೃನ್ನೋ ಭೂಯಾನ್ನ ಚಿಕೇತ ಜಾನ್ಯಹಗಂ ಶೇವಧಿರಿತ್ಯ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಶೇವಧಿರಿತ್ಯ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ಯತೆ ಹೀ ಧ್ರುವಂತ ಅನಿತ್ಯೈರ್ದ್ರವ್ಯ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತವಾನ ಜಗತ ಧೀರೋ ನ ಚಿಕ್ಕೇತ್ತೋತ್ಯಸ್ರಾಕ್ಷೀ ಅಧ್ಯಾತ್ಮಗಮೇನ ದೇವ ಧೀರೋ ಹರ್ಷ ಶೋಕ ಜಹಾತಿ chanting this is not as simple as the bhagavad gita right a little more involved so one needs to get used to it because until you chant regularly if there is no regular parayanam then you know these words are just not there and therefore the explanations will carry no meaning so in case you are not doing it at home i would strongly recommend that you do it i think uh, we we can probably send out have we sent out anything tanmay any chanting for this for mundaka acharya uh, sorry for kathopanishad no um okay. but i'll be able to if we have to do it i'll be able to start it only after um, it is yes yeah that's fine so we we better do that so that people get used to it later on okay is so we, could we have a um, call and repeat recording maybe tanmay could send so we can practice she have to actually do it uh, there's no ready made one available I no, want... and she just repeats it twice. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that, but not right now. It'll have to wait for she's, it. She's uh, at the TTC. She's teaching at uh, Nayar Dam TTC. So that may not be possible for her right now. Yeah. yeah. So we'll get it done. No problem. And future, I think, before we start an Upanishad, we'll have the audio there first. The reason why we didn't do it was that the Mundaka classes, which she is, the chanting class she's running, are having students who are not from this group you know so it's only pure chanting class 
So if we need people from this group, it will be much easier. Okay. So this is this particular verse mantra is Yamarajovach. Lord Yama is, is talking. So he says Nachiketa, oh Nachiketas, Abhidhyayan Priyan. So Nachiketa, Abhidhyayan Priyan, having considered Priyan, pleasing, plus Cha Priya Rupan, and the attractive. There are two things, pleasing and attractive. So, Abhidhyayan Priyan, Cha Priyan Rupan Kama. So, Nachiketaha, you have considered what the pleasing and the attractive things, sense objects, Kama, which I have put in front of you. And yet, he says, Saha Tvam Atya Sakshihi. You have rejected them, you have discarded them. And Na Avaptaha. Na Avaptaha means you did not accept them. And Tvam Atyasrakshi, you rejected them. And Etam Vittamiyam, even this very precious Vittamiyam, very, 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 very costly, Sringam, the necklace which I gave you, Yasyam Bahava Manushya Majjanti, in which all these people, Yasyam, in which Bahava Manushya, most of the people, Majjanti, they all get absorbed. So he's saying, Hey Nachiketas, I have presented you with many pleasing and attractive objects. Most people are, you know, obsessed with these attractive things and they would immediately choose them. But yet, you understood the limitation and therefore you rejected them. You understood that all sense objects have a limitation. And you also know that the Purnatvam, or the fulfillment, or the ananda, which we all seek, people seek through different methods. So the bachelor thinks is apurna, apurna, because there is no partner to sit with him on the pillion of his bike. The man who is getting married, he thinks that by getting married, he will be purnaha. So Veda says, there is no object in this world which can give you completeness, which can give you purnatmam. Because every object by its nature has a beginning and an end. Anything born of matter will have a beginning and an end. And therefore, every object, every vishaya, sense objects, indriya vishayas, every sense object, they are actually a purna only. They are incomplete only. And in Achiketas, you have understood that a purna object, that an incomplete object, can never give you purnatva. Unfortunately, most people don't understand this. And until this understanding comes, what happens? You will keep going from one object to another object in search of purnatva. So then that, this is what, and this is, your Lord Yama is praising uh, Rachiketas, saying that, you are beyond all this. You are not like most people. So this is Stuti. This is the Shishya Stuti. He is praising his, shishya, his Shishya. And then we look at the next mantra. So here he says, Ete Vishuchi. So Vishuchi is two diverse Ete. Bees, Vishuchi, Viparite Vishuchi. Viparite means divergent. Vishuchi is the path. So, ete, viparite, vishuchi, these two paths, yagyata, which are known to everybody, what are they? Iti avidya cha vidya. So, vidya cha vidya, that you break carefully, avidya ya cha vidya iti. So, these two paths are there in the world. One is ignorance and one is knowledge. And these two paths are duram viparite, they are very far apart. Duram Viparite, they are very far divergent because they lead to different goals, they lead to different objectives. And he Nachiketasam Manye, I consider Nachiketas to be what? Vidya Abhipsinam. So Abhipsinam, Abhipsinam is a, a seeker. Vidya Abhipsinam is a seeker of knowledge. So he Nachiketas Manye Vidya Abhipsinam. I consider you to be a seeker of true knowledge because bahavaha kamaha, numerous sense objects, na 
Alolupantaha did not tempt you. Alolupantaha is temptation. So did not tempt you. Na alolupantaha twa. Twa is you. So bahava kamaha twa na alolupantaha. They did not tempt you. So Yamraj is continuing, continuing with the glorification of the student, Nachiketa. So Vichushi, Vishuchi, Vishuchi. Vishuchi is two different margas, two different paths. And we have already seen what they are. Shreyas and Prayas. He says, so Shreyas and Prayas, Duram Viparite, they go in different directions. Almost, and Viparite can mean opposite also. So they are widely different, they are divergent. They go in opposite directions. Why? Because one path, the Prayas path, is based on what? Is based on Karma Marga. Is based on Karma. Is based on the the karma kanda of the Upanishads. And the entire karma kanda of the Upanishads is based on the assumption that I am incomplete, that I am a finite jiva. And because I am apurnaha, I am a karta, and therefore I am a bhokta. And therefore, with all these karma and bhogam, I will become purnaha. And the karma marga, when you go on the karma marga, it only confirms and strengthens this idea that I am infinite and therefore I have to do some rituals and then I will get punyam and then I will get more acquisitions because of that punyam. Because of the punyam, I will go to swarga. All these things, karma marga, marga actually strengthens the feeling of apurnatva. While jnana marga is based on what? Jnana marga questions these assumptions. It questions the fact. It tells you that no, you are not a Purnam at all. You have always been complete. You are Brahman. There is no question of incompleteness for Brahman. And therefore he says, Vidyaya cha avidyaya. Karma marga is avidya. Ignorance, jnana marga is vidya. Iti avidya cha avidya. And he says, Hek Nadikitas, you are so clear in your ideas, and you are so determined that Bahava Kamaha, all these sense objects with which I attempted to tempt you, na alu alu pantaha, did not divert you from your goal. So in the Puranas, the same teaching is presented. Remember that Puranas are only an expanded form of the Veda only. Bhagavad Gita is an expanded form of Upanishad. And Puranas are a further expansion of the Upanishads. Upanishads are terse. Bhagavad Gita is a bit more expanded. But Puranas are in story form. So it is available to everybody, understood by everybody. And the Puranas, the same idea is presented as Mohini seducing everybody. So Mohini represents press and the, and the, and the pot in her hand. In Mohini's hand, there is a pot. What is inside the pot? Amritam. Inside the pot is Amritam. So if Mohini represents prayers, the Amritam in the hand represents stress. And, and Lord Yama is now confirming to Nachiketas that since Nachiketas has rejected all the Anityam, what are the Anityams? Wealth, kingdom, long life, etc., and has chosen the knowledge, Nityam Shreyas, in his opinion, Nachiketas is a Adhikari. He is a Sadhana Chatushtaya. And Shankara in his commentary uses a very interesting word to describe this. He says, Nachiketas is Shreyo Bhajanam. So Bhajanam is a vessel. And Shreyaha means Shreyaha Moksha. So Shreyo Bhajanam is a vessel fit for Moksha. So, Nachiketas is a adhikari, a proper adhikari. That is the meaning. Then you look at the next mantra, mantra number five. So, he says, Avidhyaya mantare vartamanaha soyam dhiraha panditam manyamanaha. So, antare vartamanaha. So, you are soaked. These people, he's talking about certain people. They are steeped, they are soaked. In what? Avidhyayam. In ignorance. And because they are ignorant, 
because they are actually sitting in a large pot of ignorance, manyamanaha, they consider themselves as what? Swayam dhiraha. Manyamanaha, swayam dhiraha. They consider themselves as jnanis and panditaha. And panditas means learned people. These mudaha, these people are deluded ones. What do they do? Though they are actually deluded because of their ignorance, what do they do? They consider themselves to be jnanis. And therefore, mudaha paryanti. They move around on this earth. Dandriya manaha, they are wandering all over. And he compares this to yatha andha niyamanaha andhena eva. As if, and this comparison, these, these people who are deluded actually and consider themselves to be wise, they are going around teaching. And therefore he says, these people are like the blind leading the blind. Yatha andha, just like the blind. Niyamanaha, being led by andhena eva, being led by a blind person. As the blind people are led by the blind person, they go nowhere. And therefore, he says, these people, because they're ignorant, but they consider themselves to be wise, this is their fate. So, we understand that all jivas, all living beings are born with ignorance. Okay? And the Lord has, Ishwara has provided resources for removing the ignorance and acquiring knowledge to human beings. And for this, we know that six pramanam are there. So, I'll just briefly name the pramanams. I am sure all of your advanced students know what they are. So, we will not go into explanation of that. So, Pratyaksha pramanam is one. Anumana pramanam, number two. Upamana Pramanam, number three. Arthapatti Pramanam, number four. Anuplabdha, Anuplabdha Pramanam, number five. And Shastra Pramanam. These are six Pramanam accepted by Vedanta. And these six Pramanams are to be used. Pramanam is what? A source of knowledge. These six Pramanams are to be used for inquiry and discovery of your real self. And he says, when he refers to this avidhyaya mantare vartamanaha is referring to those people who are intellectually arrogant. They are ignorant also. But because of this arrogance, they don't believe that anybody can teach them anything and therefore they refuse to come to Shastra. Therefore, avidhyayam antare vartamanaha soaked in ignorance. What ignorance is this? Atma Ajnanam, ignorance of the Atma. So misconceptions about the Atma they have. Such people who have refused to come to Vedanta are being criticized by Lord Yama. So he says, Swayam Dhiraha Panditam Manyamanaha. They look upon themselves as wise men and great scholars. But actually, what are they? Mudaha. They are deluded people. For them, life is a huge liability. And Dandriya Manaha, they move from one material goal to another material goal. And Shankara adds very carefully over here, in this life, they are wandering all the time. In, while they are alive, they are in search of karma phalam for the, for the various karmas they do. And after death, they also wander in all the other lokas also. And so he uses some you know, very specific words. He says, Atyartham Kutilam. So Kutilam is a crooked path. Atyartham Kutilam means very, very devious and crooked path they travel by. And why is it Kutilam? Why is it crooked path? Gatim Gachantaha. Sometimes it goes up and sometimes it goes down. So sometimes they go to higher locals. Sometimes they go to lower locals. They travel in this zigzag manner continuously. So, aneka rupa, movements of different types they have. And Shankara adds, jara marana roga adi dukhaihi. So, they are all diseases, all afflictions they have, old age, death, disease, sorrow, jara marana roga dukhaihi. All these things they have. And pariyanti, 
therefore they are going round and round and round hub and therefore what is the conclusion andhenaiva niyamana yathartha these people are like blind people being led by another blind person which means that you will never reach anywhere safely you will continuously keep on falling because your guide also is blind and therefore the implication here is never trust your intellect alone intellect you have a good intellect you have a very sharp intellect it is the grace of the lord but without the direction of vedanta without the direction of shastram without the blessing of shastram you will be a aviveki only and you will continue on the prayas mark and and even in the prayas marga shastra says there are two divisions so there is a the believer the astika who is on prayas marga and there is all also the nastika who is on prayas marga so we are not talking about shreyas at all even in the prayas marga in the prayas and shreyas we remember right prayas is what is pleasant and shreyas is what is beneficial they need not be convergent they can be totally different so on the path of the pleasant the prayas marga there is a astika who is there there is also a nastika who is there what is the definition of astika anybody knows uh, the one who believes the veda is a valid proof yeah so veda asti the one who believes that the veda is the pramanam and nastika here is the one who does not accept the veda as praman so the next mantra is talking about the nastika who is on the marg of praya this is a praya marga nastika for him his nastika status his atheism it rules rules out any dharma purushartha why because dharma purushartha is been conveyed by by whom by the veda and this nastika does not believe in the veda so for him dharma purushartha is not there only the normal of artha kama is there artha kama the veda need not tell you veda does tell you about artha kama but it need not tell you because artha kama everybody knows we all know that we need security we all know that we have desires so pratyaksha pramanam itself conveys artha kama dharma and moksha is conveyed by veda but this person who is being talked about now is an astika therefore he is only talking about artha kama so we look at verse number 6 mantra number 6 now so he says samparaya so samparaya is spiritual spiritual scriptural discipline samparaya na pratibhati balam so balam is the term being used the child the indiscriminate person the the nastika on the praya marga is being referred to as balam indiscriminate person samparaya na pratibhati samparaya is spiritual or scriptural discipline study of the scriptures na pratibhati does not appeal to people to whom balam so the the indiscriminate people for them this this scriptural study is not there it does not appeal to them and therefore what are they pramavyantam they are negligent ones and mudham they are also deluded so three adjectives balam the nastika on the path of, on the path of prayas he is pramadyantam he is mudham also he is negligent and he is deluded why vitta mohena so vitta means wealth moham is infatuation delusion because of his infatuation with vittam with all the worldly pleasures what does he say so this is the rest of it is in inverted commas i am lokaha asti he says i am lokaha asti this world alone exists na paraha there is nothing beyond this world this is charvaka philosophy i am lokaha asti only this world exists na paraha there is nothing beyond this world itimani thinking in this manner what happens yamraj says yamraj is saying that this person this nastika who does not believe in the vedas and to whom scriptural study does not appeal 
and who keeps thinking in this manner that this world alone is there and nothing is beyond this world yamraj adds me vasham apti ap apadyate apadyate he comes under my grip me vasham is my grip apadyate he comes under so me vasham apadyate he comes under my grip when once or twice no punaha punaha again and again he comes under my grip so these deluded people says yamraj they have no faith they have no shraddha in either the purva veda karma kanda or in the veda anta so purva veda talks about a dharma shastra lifestyle a religious lifestyle which includes things like which you have discussed panchamaha yagna all these things so this vedic discipline which is which is which comes out of the purva veda this is what is called over here samparaya and what what do this what do these rituals do all these rituals they give you punyam so this samparaya give you adrishta punyam and when you get punyam out of vedic rituals that punyam can be encashed into different ways it's like you have a bank balance like you can you can you know issue a check for material things you can issue a check for charity the source is the same here also this punyam balance in your account it can be used in two ways it can be either used for your material prosperity and sense pleasures which is preya marga the path of prayas or you can use it for sadhana chatushtayam sampattihi for gnana yogyata you can use it either way you can use it so one is for preya marga one is for shreya marga how you use it is up to you and how do we make these rituals meaningful it is with the appropriate bhavana the appropriate attitude so we can the the lamp which we light up every morning there are two ways of looking at it you can look at it as a piece of you know thread which is caught fire as a flame itself or you can consider it as gnana deepika the flame of knowledge you can look at it plain old flame or gnana deepika it's all dependent upon the bhavana the appropriate attitude and therefore yamaraj says balam these indiscriminate childish people sampra samparihana pratihati they don't sampar paraya na pratibati they do not accept the veda they do not come to scriptural study at all and because of the infatuation with the wealth why because for him dharma and moksha purushartha does not exist because he has not studied the veda they don't exist at all and therefore for him only what is available through pratyaksham direct perceptual knowledge which is what artha and kama these are existing for him so greed for wealth and entertainment these are there for him and therefore because he doesn't have the knowledge because he is ignorant of the teachings of the veda he can think only in one manner this is the only world that is there whatever is visible to my sense organs only that is available only that is real everything else is nonsense he will say punyam and papam are not visible to him so he does not accept punyam and papam he does not accept swarga and narga and since he says i am lokaha asti well only this world right and paraha loka nasti so para can also refer to ishvara so iti mani thinking that only this world exists and there is no lord there is no ishvara he claims and those of you who are who have got atheists as friends you know the common strain the common refrain of all of them is that you religious people are all very weak and frightened you are insecure why because you need the lord as support look at me i'm such a strong person i am independent i depend only on myself i don't depend upon the lord at all therefore i am strong and you are weak this is a common refrain of all atheists they look down upon people who are believers and mani in this manner what will happen to them puna punaha me vasham apadyate and he comes under my grips again under my grip again and again and again basically meaning that he dies and he is reborn so punarapi jananam 
Punaragmaranam, the cycle of birth and death, he falls under. He is never able to escape. Okay. Now we look at mantra number seven. <coughs> so, mantra number seven. So, he says, Yaha na labhyaha. So, this Yaha is in the second line. Yaha na labhyaha. This Yaha means this. This means this Atma na labhyaha is not available through. He gives various things. Shavanaya api. Even after lots of listening or lots of shravanam, this atma is not available. Bahubhi to many people. And api shanvantaha. So, first one is that many people they are not available for shravanam. They, they are not having the necessary prarabdha to go to a teacher and listen. So, the opportunity for shravanam itself is not available to many people. Because of their lack of prarabdha. That is the first group of people. Then, shravan, <coughs> Shravanaya Api. That is for Shravanam, it is not available. Then the next one is Api Shanvantaha. So, the first line is saying that many people do not have the opportunity for Shravanam itself. Because the necessary prarabdha is not there. And therefore, they don't find a teacher. The second one is talking about Shanvanto Api. Having listened to. So, there are people who have done Shravanam. They have had the Prarabdha to find a teacher and they have done Shravanam. But, Api, in spite of that Shravanam, Bahavaha Navidyu, many people, they do not understand the Atma. Bahavaha Yam Navidyu, they do not understand the Atma. Yam is the Atma. Then, Ascharya Vakta Kushulose Labdha, Ascharya Gyata Kushulara Shishtaha. Does this line ring a bell with you? Have you come across it anywhere before? Bhagavad Gita. You should not forget. Bhagavad Gita, Krishna borrows that from here. Okay. So, he is saying, here he says that Ascharya Vakta. Vakta is the one who talks about it, one who teaches. So, Ascharya Vaktaha. The one who talks about the Atma is a great wonder. And Labdha Asya, the one who actually understands and discovers this Atma, he is a greater wonder. Kushalaha, he is a wonder. And Kushalaha Anushishtaha, a person who has been instructed by Kushalaha, the person who is instructed by a spiritual teacher and Jnata, who has become the Atma, who has understood that he is the Atma, Ascharyaha, he is also a great one. So, indicating how rare it is to find a competent teacher and an eligible student, the Adhikari. So, your Lord Yama is talking about the glory of the Guru and the Shishya and the teaching by saying that all these the three of them are very rare. So a guru, an acharya who is a jnani is very rare. Because there are many, many jnanis who may be jnanis, but they don't believe in sharing. Because they think there are students are not worthy enough. And therefore they are jnanis, but they don't teach. The, their prarabdha is there, which doesn't make them available for teaching. After all, we know that even if you are a jnani, the body has prarabdha. And unless that prarabdha is such that it will enable you to teach, even as a jnani, you might be sitting in the Himalayas and sitting in a cave and not being available to teach to anybody. Therefore, a jnani who actually has the prarabdha which enables him to teach, and not only that, he has the adequate number of eligible students also that jnani, that teacher, is a rare phenomenon. Why? Because the shishya who wants to, want to learn the Shastra is also very, very rare. Because in today's world, who has the time or the inclination or the patience to sit for years together to learn? And thus, if guru and shishya are available, the teaching itself is there. 
but when they are not available the teaching is not there very very rare teaching so guru is there shishya is not there teaching is not there shishya is there guru is there teaching is not there and that's why teaching itself is very very rare when both guru and shishya are there then the teaching is available and as we seen in earlier vedanta classes the entire class of humanity can be divided into certain categories the first person is a anadhikari very clearly an adhikari the person who is not an adhikari which means who is not a patra who is not a fit vessel he is not fit for receiving the teaching he is the necessary punyam is not there in him the punyam necessary the prarabdha necessary is not available in him and therefore he is simply not interested so that is the anadhikari the second is the manda adhikari so first is the one who is not available at all for the teaching right the second one is a adhikari but manda adhikari he is a dull adhikari so he has very little punyam but the great saving grace is god he wants to hear even though he does not understand so he comes to class he doesn't understand but he still comes to class he doesn't know why but vedanta pulls him he is attracted to vedanta he comes to class so manda adhikari he may not understand at all but he is there in every class then there is a madhyama adhikari he is reasonable fit so he comes he understands and when the teacher says he says yes acharya everything is very clear and if the teacher questions a bit more he adds one word but i know i am brahman but it is very clear to me that i am brahman but why when i put on my shoes or my chappals in practical life the shoes and chappals which i have left outside the satsang hall i put it on one shoe is dhaga and one shoe is vesha so the qualities required for complete assimilation vairagya and viveka are not there because they have been replaced by raga and vesha and therefore this madhyama adhikari he understands in class <clears throat> but he is not able to carry the teaching home he is not able to assimilate so there is a person who is not interested there is a person who is interested but does not understand there is a person who is interested and understands but is not able to take the teaching home is not able to assimilate and the last one is uttama adhikari the person who is able to understand and assimilate such people are very very rare so this the difficulty is what when shastram talks about brahman we try to use the same method to understand as we have done in our lives to understand any object if i talk about the qualities of an apple what do i do i try to visualize that apple i try to convert that apple into a object available to my sense organs based on its various qualities and then try to analyze and the problem is you can't do this to brahman you cannot objectify brahman and we talked about a technical word which is used to show that you cannot convert brahman into an object in bhagavad gita we talked about that what is that word anybody what is that word which indicates that brahman cannot be objectified you cannot convert it into an object aprameya a prameyam not an object of knowledge it cannot be a prameyam at all and the fact is that this teacher of the brahma vidya when he is talking about brahman he is not talking about an object which is brahman but he is talking about you the student the subject and therefore we should not fall into the trap of trying to visualize brahman as a third object what should we do we should claim brahman as ourselves and this is the message as long as i try to imagine a brahman 
different from me, I will never be successful. Therefore, the one who says, Aham Brahmasmi, he is free from this orientation that Brahman is an object different from me. He has claimed himself as Brahman. And that is why Kushalaha, he says, he is skillful. And this happens only when this knowledge is taught by a competent Acharya. So here the word Labdha. Yaha na Labdha. Labdha should be understood as Jnata. Labdha indicates something which is attained. So that attainment is always of something different from you. And therefore the word Labdha has to be retranslated as Jnata, known. Brahman has to be, Atma has to be known, not attained, not received. And that is why if you see, this Labdha is, Labhya is there in the first line. But there is another word in one of the other lines which replaces Labdha. Which is that? See the fourth line. Ascharnyo Gyata. The fourth line replaces the word Labhya with Gyata. The word Gyata means he is understood. And for this, this mantra is basically uh, a glorification of the teacher, a glorification of the Shishya, and a glorification of the teaching the Vidya itself. All three are glorified, showing that how rare it is to find a combination of all three. And Yamaraj is pointing out that this knowledge is very subtle and very controversial. And therefore, if it is taught by a teacher who is incompetent, in the sense that he has not under what is an incompetent teacher, you might know the subject upside down. But if you have not understood that you are Brahman, then that teacher is not competent. When he doesn't think that he is Brahman, how can he tell you that you are Brahman? Right? And therefore, he says there are many, many controversies about this subject. The first one is whether Atma really exists. Does Atma exist or not? The second one is there may be Astikas who accept that Atma exists, but there is always a controversy about the nature of that Atma. So is it inert matter or is it conscious consciousness principle or is it a mixture of both Chaitanya, Chaitanya, Mishram? This is a, this is a controversy. The third controversy is there. Atma is ekam or anekam. Is Atma one or is it many? So there are Sankhya, Yogya, Yoga, Nyaya, Nyaya Vasheshika. All these darshanas, have, everybody says that Atma is individual. Anekam. Everybody has an individual Atma. But we Advaitans, we say Atma is only one. Bodies are many. And there is a fourth, fourth category of people who talk about the size of the Atma. Vishishta way. They say Atma is smaller than a thumb. But we say Atma is Vibhu, all pervading. So there are many who say that Atma is like the body, neither small nor big, but equivalent to the body. And therefore, Yamaraja says that there are many, many people. That are, this is debated in very many ways. And this is going to be talk, talked about in the next mantra. He's going to talk about the various, various uh, ideas which are there present in the world. Okay. So, we look at the next mantra then. Mantra number 8. This is the last for the day. We might just run slightly over time. So, I will seek your you know, pardon in advance. <laughs> now, he says, Eshaha this Atma, Chintya Manaha. He is talking about different types of people having different ideas about the Atma. So, Eshaha. So, Eshaha Chintya Manaha. This Atma is imagined Bahuda in very many different ways by different darshanas. So that you have to supply by various thinkers, by different darshanas. Various people have different ideas about the Atma. And therefore, avarena narena proktaha. So avarena is incompetent. Nara is a person. So avarena narena proktaha. When talked about, when discussed 
by an incompetent teacher, by an incompetent person, Esaha na suvigneyaha. This Atma cannot be understood clearly. This is a very important mantra because the qualification of the Acharya is being highlighted. What is that main qualification? He should be very clear. Aham Brahma Asmi. This Acharya cannot think that Brahman is an external object, somebody different from him. If he does that, then in his teaching also, he will present Brahman as an extraordinary object outside. And when Brahman is presented as an object outside you, then it is what we call mysticism. It is very mystic, mysterious. Nobody understands that teaching. So it is mysticism. And then he will talk about mystical experiences. And he will say that to understand Brahman, you have to have an experience like Nirvikalpa Samadhi, something like that. And therefore, you will not understand. Because he himself is not able to explain. Since he doesn't know that he is Brahman. How can he explain to others that you are Brahman? Right? On the other hand, there are many Shastric people. People who are well-versed in the Shastra. But they have come to the conclusion that Shastra is an exercise which is an ego-boosting exercise. It is an intellectualist exercise. And therefore, they say that the intellect can never understand the Atma. You have to transcend the intellect. So You will hear this from many teachers. Brahman can be realized only by transcending the intellect. And some mysterious Brahman has to be realized in some mysterious state of meditation. And therefore, this person, he will never present Brahman as himself. He will always present Brahman as an object. But here Shankar, here uh, Yamaraj is saying that that is wrong. Because, and therefore he gives a few examples. He says, Esha Mahuda Chintamana. With regard to this Atma, there are many, many darshanas, there are many, many views. And what are they? So we have seen, seen some of these in our earlier discussions in the Bhagavad Gita. So one is Sattva Vivadaha, what is called Satta Vivadaha. Satta is existence or not existence. So, asti nasti. Atma astiva nastiva. Does Atma exist or not? That is one of the discussions which, which can happen. Because Atma is not provable through conventional scientific methods. Because scientific methods deal with the external world. Atma is not available to all those instruments which are examining the external world, which are your sense organs. And therefore, this particular astiva, nastiva is not available to conventional methods of, of examination. Then there is a discussion about Swarupa, about the nature of the Atma. Is it Chetanam? Is it conscious? Is it, is it Jada Achetanam? Or is it Chetana Achetanam? So there is, a, there is a discussion which says, is Atma conscious? Is Atma inert? Or is it a mixture of consciousness and inert? So there are darshanas which talk about that also. Then there is Sankhya Vivada. So is Atma Ekam or Anekam? Sankhya is a number. So here, the Nyaya Vashishika will say that Atmas are infinite. Everybody has their own Atma. Then there is another Vishishta Advaita which talks about Parimana, the size of the Atma. Whether the Atma is small, Anu, or whether it is infinite, Vibhu, or whether it is neither infinite nor finite, but in the middle somewhere like the body. There are many, many darsanas. And therefore, Yamraj says, Esha Bahuda Chintyamanaha. It's a much debated topic. And therefore, Nasuvignyayaha. It cannot be understood easily. And he adds, Avarena Narena. If it is taught by an incompetent teacher. And then he says, Ananya Prokte, Ananya Prokte Sati. Ananya Prokte means, Ananya means what? The one for whom there is no Anya. Anya means others. Ananya means no others. So Ananya here is the teacher, the one who sees himself as non-different from Brahman, as non-different from anything else. So Ananya Prokte Sati. When the teacher who is who considers that he is Brahman, who considers that he is not different from anything else in the universe, 
that teacher when he teaches prokte sati when he teaches atra atra non understanding nasti and that particular time when the such a teacher teaches there is no non understanding that means you will definitely understand provided of course that shishya is sadhana chatushtrayam sampanna that is adhikari if he is shishya as a adhikari if he is eligible for gyanam when such a teacher teaches there is no question of not understanding at all and he says atarkyam atarkyam means this atma is not available for tarka tarka is logical reasoning why is the atma not available for tarka because any logical reasoning requires data and when you say logical reasoning usually we means we mean data which has been gathered by the pramanam available to us for the external world which means what five senses sense organs indriyas all data which is available to us is available only to one of the five sense organs and therefore these five sense organs obviously we know that atma is indriya agocharam not available to the sense organs and therefore these five sense, sense organs cannot gather any data about the atma where is the question of logical reasoning coming in data itself is absent since atma is not available for sensory perception apramayam it's not available at all it cannot be made an object of your senses and therefore there can be no data available about the atma where is the question of using a process which requires that data and therefore atarkyam this atma is not available for logical reasoning and he says if you use supposing you use the reasoning what happens anupramanat aniyan bhavanti the atom this atma will become more and more incomprehensible to you the more you use science to understand the more atma becomes incomprehensible so you look you use science to understand let us say a piece of wood then you analyze the wood you will find that it consists of atoms and or molecules you analyze the molecules it consists of atoms you analyze the atoms it consists of protons you analyze those also it consists of subatomic particles you analyze those also it consists of wave patterns and you can go on the more you analyze the more incomprehensible the whole thing becomes that is why it's called maya that which can never clearly be stated in logic logical terms and therefore shankar i mean therefore yama is saying that you need two things you need shastram and you need logic to understand the atma you need both just like you go to the bathroom and you want to see your face you need two things what are they to see your face in the mirror you need two things face and the mirror eyes also you need the mirror yeah. and eyes eyes. Eyes. eyes also you, you need, need the eyes. light to see it if there's okay. no light then you can't see so the mirror and the eyes are both necessary just the mirror will not be able to, you will not be able to see your face just the eyes you will not be able to see your face as you mean that light is there and similarly he says shastram assisted by logic by tarka that will give you atma gyana so employment of shastram to make you understand atma he calls shravanam employment of tarka logic to make you understand the atma remember that shastram is primary the knowledge given by shastram is primary logic is secondary logic supporting logic and therefore when i sit in shravanam that is employment of shastram to make me understand what is atma when i use my logical faculty to analyze what i have heard that is tarka faculty being used that is manam so employment of shastram is called shravanam employment of tarka logic is called varanam both together 
will make me understand what is Atma. Will make me understand that this Atma is none other than me. Will enable me to claim Aham Brahma Asmi. So with this, I stop for today. Any questions? Om Acharya, as yes. you said, the Nidvi Kalpa Samadhi. So actually, this has been running in my mind. So what happens when a person is in a state of Samadhi? Um, a, there is no thought. I mean, is that possible without the Vritti? Do you have thought when you are in, let us say, Shashupti Avastha? Okay, no. So it is possible for the mind to have, I won't say there are no thoughts of Shruti Avastha, there will be one thought. That, that one thought is what? That I am not having any thoughts. That one thought would be there. So it is possible for the mind to be concentrated artificially to such an extent that no thought is there. Or only really one thought is there, simple one thought is there. That is that I am in meditation. So the meditation thought is there. So nirvikalpa basically means without parts. The meditator, the object of meditation, and the process of meditation, what we call triputi, that is missing in nirvikalpa samadhi. It is there in savikalpa samadhi, but it is missing in nirvikalpa samadhi. But in that nirvikalpa samadhi, since you have no other thoughts, how are you going to learn that Aham Brahma Asmi. That is what is said here. Aham Brahma Asmi can be taught to you only by Veda, only by Shravana. There is no other Pramanam to tell you that you are Brahman. Okay. Okay. So we are nearing the beginning of the teaching, not yet. We'll start after some time. Another two, another one more class, and then only you can actually begin the teaching. This is all a run up. So yes, two is over. And some general talk is going on right now between Yamaraj and Acharya, how is it that there are uh, you know almost exactly the same shlokas in certain Upanishads, like the one that we did today? Yes, it's there in Mundaka also. Oh yeah, just just one word that is yes. changed, but otherwise so, it's exactly the same. It is the same. It is you know we are we have to uh, we have to take it as a source being the same, Ishvara, and for certain amount of repetitions can be there here and there, and that is why deliberately in the Gita also you will find that some verses are almost complete lifts. Yes. Actually, in this section itself, there are two more two more two more mantras which you will find almost you know. Exactly. Exactly the same in Bhagavad Gita. It's just to show you that Bhagavad Gita is not independent teaching. It is based mm. on the Veda Upanishad. alone. Upanishad mm. alone. Mm. Thank you, Acharya. Yes, Pandana. Um, Acharya, slightly digressing this question, but I was wondering, is, is an Astika, an atheist, really any far from Adhikarihood than an Astika who hasn't come to Gyanam? Because I mean, you often see that atheists are, can practice like a high level of dispassion and they also seem to have a moral code that they operate by. Okay. But so, I mean, the very essence of the whole thing is what? In, in very many Upanishads, you know, Shankaracharya goes to a very great extent. I mean, all Bhashyams of the Bhashyams are... You know, devoted to the fact that Saguna Ishwara is a is a very, you know, very much existing entity. You have to, you have to qualify that in the Vivaharika world. So if you refuse to accept Saguna Ishwara, where is the question of coming to Nirguna Ishwara at all? I I mean, from the sense that both are like someone who's like a blind bhakta. Um, and Even a blind someone... bhakta will accept Ishwara, right? The very word bhakta means Ishwara is there in your life. Mm -hmm. So unless you have 
the whole jnanam remember the entire jnanam is based on what is based on the on the substratum of ishvara bhakti without bhakti there is no jnanam at all therefore there is a very there is a very common misconception that vedanta takes away bhakti so the person who says that he has not understood either vedanta or bhakti you have to have a very strong grounding in karma kanda which is bhakti alone to be able to migrate to jnana kanda Right. Thank you. Okay. Om, sir. Yeah, Sundar. This blind faith also amounts to Shraddha, which is very... Blind important. faith is Shraddha, but blind faith needs to be tempered with or needs to, you know, evolve into informed faith where you start questioning based on the Shastra. Yes, sir. Otherwise, it becomes counterproductive. Okay, sir. One more question. This is yeah. uh, not related to this. This uh, 10 major Upanishads yeah. for which uh, Bhagavan Shankaracharya has written commentaries, Bhashyam. Yes. Does any one of them differ on this uh, Ekarupa Ishwara, Brahman? Duality. Is there any duality in any of the... All of them are starting with duality only, you know. Mundakai Upanishad you saw, beginning description of Brahman. Yes. When you talk about a description of Brahman, as eyes are the sun and the moon and all that, you are in duality only. All of them, almost all of them, excepting Mandukya. Mandukya is a very, you know, top of the pyramid. All of them will talk about a lot of Saguna Ishwara. In fact, in Chandraguru Upanishad, out of the eight chapters, five, the first five talk only about karma kanda. Six, seven, eight chapters are only jnana kanda. Bradharanika also talks a lot about Saguna Ishwara. So yes, Ishwara is very much there as an entity, but all we have to remember is that whenever we say Saguna Ishwara exists, it is from the, not from the Paramarthika view, it is from the Vyavaharika. From the transactional plane, the Lord exists. Yes, All sir. of us exist. In the transactional plane, you are not the Lord. So, to move from that Aham Dasa to Soham, that is movement from Vyavaharika plane to Paramarthika plane. Patanjali Maharishi also says that uh, Ishwara is there. He is a Purusha Vishesha. So, yes, but unfortunately the, they talk about Prakriti and Purusha as separate. Yes, that is due to huh? But uh, Patanjali Maharishi believes in uh, Ishwara. Yes, Purusha Vishesha it is. Yes. A specific form of Purusha. But for, for Patanjali there are different number, number of Purushas are there, not just one. Yes. So among all the Purushas, there is a specific Purusha who is not affected by Klesha and all that. That is yes. called Ishwara. There are as many Purushas as many. As there are people. As there are Jivas, exactly. Yes. yes. So that, see, I personally think that this is an interpretation. I don't know whether Patanjali really meant it. That has to be. Right? Somebody has really studied those sutras to understand whether there is a possible Advaitic explanation of those sutras. Yes, sir. I think Bhagavan Shankaracharya saw that. That uh, non-dualistic in that dualistic. I action. believe there is a... I have not got it actually. There is a exposition on Yoga Sutras by Swami Dayananda. So, if you are interested, you can get all of that. Our Dayananda Saraswati, sir. Our yes. Swami Dayananda Saraswati. He has given Yoga Sutras at least some part of it. I am not very sure where it is. I have not come across it. Um, I'll see if I can uh, get a location yes, for yes. it. Thank you, sir. There is one by one of his students, Raviji. Uh -huh. um, his name is Aruna, I think. Yeah, 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 I know that. Yeah. Aruna has written one that is based on this original work of uh, Swamidhyananda Ji. 
I remember actually seeing in Rishikesh when I was there. I remember seeing one. Uh, what do you call? Priyanka, I remember. She was with me that at that point of time. Priyanka, do you remember? Are you there? Uh, yes, I'm there. I it I uh, I don't remember the name of the book, but I remember you telling me to uh, like you know get that book, but it was not available. There was a CD, yeah. There was a CD which had that uh, Yoga Sutra on it. There is this one uh, lecture series on Yoga Sutra by Swami, uh, the foreigner Swami Tattva. Just a second, let me check. I have I have it downloaded, but I don't remember who the guy is. Tadatmananda. Yes, Tadatmananda. Correct. So he has done a lecture on uh, Yoga Sutras and some Yoga Upanishad also, and they are all Advaitic uh, explanations. Yeah. So if somebody is interested, they can actually look at that. And compile the whole thing and then give us a lecture on how to interpret Yoga Sutras in the Advaitic manner. Do you want to volunteer, Nagopal, uh, since you are yes, anyway sir. doing it? Do that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will be happy to do that. Great. Please, I should get uh, access to that uh, lecture. I, I'll find out what I can. And uh, you have a look at the uh, Rishikesh Arshavidya website. They would be having it. Okay, so I'll do that. Handle it. Okay. So, oh, this... much, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so, oh, oh, Raviji, uh, the Vedas were written at different periods of time, isn't it? Vedas were never one? written. I mean, heard. Heard. Prati. So, so uh, the Vedas were supposed to have been heard by these Saptarishis. Right. And so then, is it? yeah, from the Saptarishis onwards, the parampara has flown. So, uh, so like what Tanmayji asked about common verses, is it possible because they were heard at different times uh, and they were passed on, it's possible that there are some common uh, verses or common uh, mantras? In... That's just speculation, right? Okay. It doesn't really yeah. mean anything because the idea conveyed is the same. Right, of course. Yeah. Okay. Yes, thank you. We can't really go around figuring out when it was given, since we have no access to that kind yeah. of information at all. Right. All we can right. say is the original receivers of the Veda were the Saptarishis. Yes. And from them, it, flew, it it went came down in a Guru Parampara tradition. Right. If you oh, see Bhagavad Gita, it talks about giving uh, Vivaswan and then Manu and so on and so forth, you know? It, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Acharya, so the yoga, um, the knowledge, uh, we always talk about the samadhi part, but the sutra, whole sutras itself is about the knowledge. They, they do talk about sukha, dukha, raga, dvesha, and how your practice has to be and all. So there is some amount of knowledge in the sutras, right? So Yoga sutra, yoga sutra the only thing we accept from there is the uh, ashtanga. The entire theory part is rejected by us. Because okay. it con contradicts everything of Vedanta. In fact, when you do Brahma Sutras, you will see Shankaracharya negating all those. Until then, you have to just be patient. Mm. Okay. Sure. Sir. Thank you. Okay. So, thank you very much. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnam Deva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Om Tatsat Om Namashivaya Thank you for your patience Om Tatsat Thank you Acharya